good morning or evening or afternoon or like somewhere in between some of those at night maybe the internet's really hard because everybody reads slash watches things at such a different time my favorite part about summer is the fact that i get to read all summer long I get to do whatever i want this is a list of all the books that i read this summer the first book I actually borrowed from a friend, so I don't have it with me, but it's the disreputable, disreputable history of Frankie Lindo Banks. It was amazing. It was well written. The author did a beautiful job with this book. I was very, I was really impressed. Um, a friend of mine read a couple of chapters and was like, this isn't really my cup of tea. I'm not really enjoying myself reading this book, so she stopped. But then I was like, yo, can I read it? Because I've read reviews that were really awesome about it, and I read it, and it was Oh my god, it was great. It was absolutely everything I could ask for in a book. To give you like a little plot line, it's this boarding school that she goes to. This girl, Frankie Lindo Banks, she goes to for high school. And it's very patriarchal, like this hierarchy of like the guys are up here and then the girls are down here. And there's like secret clubs and if your parents went to the school or if they're rich and famous, you have like the superiority over other people. And she comes in and she just like crashes it, she dismantles it, it's beautiful. It's one of the best books I think I've ever read in my whole life. The next two books are actually the worst two books I think I've ever read. They're the um, Get Well Soon and Have a Nice Day. The Get Well Soon I have on my Kindle, but the Have a Nice Day books. I've read horrible books in my life. These were awful. The plot line is that she's She's depressed, I guess. They never really go into why she's going to this place, but she goes to a mental hospital. And she's like angry at the world and she misses her friends and she hates it there and everyone's awful to her. And you think it's gonna be one of these things where she like eventually overcomes it, right? Well, she meets this guy there, okay? And like, I'm not gonna give any spoilers away, obviously. She meets this guy and he's the reason why she gets better. And it's sort of like, I kind of wanted some like empowerment, some like, some like will from within to come out and like have her be like I don't need you because I need to get better first and all these different things but no and she was fine because she had a boyfriend and because she ate cat and crunch what kind of book is that I thought it was awful I I thought it was poorly written I thought it was like really like cliche and I, I just I really didn't like it at all I'm sorry to the author but no bueno homie no bueno the next book and if you've read this book, you know exactly the, like, reason why I'm hesitating to even, like, mention it. Kurt Vonnegut's Cat's Cradle. I... The, there are no words. It was the, gr the best written book I've ever read. The, the writing style was impeccable. It was, it was perfect. Um, so this guy wants to write a book, okay, that's the, he's the main character, and he wants to write a book on the guy who invented the atomic bomb. Little did he know that this guy was crazy, his wife and his kids were completely out of control, but he was crazy in the best way, and he was, he was, he had to interview his kids and his boss and other people who knew him, and it was just this, like, crazy turn of events, and somehow he ends up going to this fictitious island with all of his kids, and there's this religion that they all believe in, and oh my god. The next book that I read was Eleanor and Park. I know I'm so, I'm, I know, I know, I'm so behind the bandwagon on this one. Everyone read it a couple of years ago, I get it. Well, I just read it, like, a couple of weeks ago. If you know me, even just a tiny little bit, you know that I cry. I cry a lot, I cry profusely. Ooh, a text message. As my favorite English teacher once put it, I don't have a roadblock between my heart and my eyeballs. I think that says enough. But the thing is, is that I don't cry while I'm reading because I have this mindset that if I start crying, it's gonna become like really blurry and I won't be able to see and then I'll put the book down and then I'll never finish it. It's happened millions of times before and I don't want it to happen ever again. So I have this, you know, mindset going on while I'm reading. Eleanor and Park destroyed that, okay? while reading. I mean, it was mostly towards the end of the book, and if you know 
the book if you read it you know exactly what I'm talking about I actually <laughs> lost it the book is about a girl named Eleanor who comes to a new town and meets this guy named Park and you know they have their cute little romance it's actually <laughs> really adorable okay but um there's a whole lot of things going on in Eleanor's life that affect how she interacts with Park and because of that the ending is very sad um, but it's just a, it's just a really heavy duty book it's just a really thick concept and it's just really hard to read sometimes but it's masked by this very cute you know almost like they're not even in a relationship it's just sort of like they're such good friends that they have to be in a relationship they're so